Now, we need to read the next verse that goes with it, by the way. For whom he foreknew, he also foreordained to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And let me read on. All of this goes together. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, or whom he foreordained, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now, we're not talking about here anybody being elected to be lost. Because the ones that he's talking about here happen to be the ones he mentioned in verse 28. We know that all things work together to them that love God. And the ones that are predestinated, and predestination never has any reference to the lost. You'll never find it used in connection with them. And if anybody begins to talk about this man is predestined to be lost, you're not being scriptural. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible does say that when God saves you, that he's going to see you through. And it means just simply this. Whom he foreknew, he predestinated. And whom he predestinated, he called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. And this is amazing. This is a section on sanctification. And he doesn't even mention being sanctified. Why? Because that's the work of God in the heart and life of the believer. This here is God's eternal purpose. And it just simply means this, friend, that when the Lord, who is the great shepherd of the sheep, and he's the good shepherd of the sheep, and he's the chief shepherd of the sheep, when he starts out with 100 sheep, he's going to come through with 100 sheep. When he starts out with 100 sheep, why, he's not going to lose one of them. Remember, our Lord gave a parable about that. There was a shepherd, a good shepherd, and that's God. That's the Lord Jesus. And one little old sheep got away, (laughs) got lost. And he might say, well, let him go. We got 99. They were safe in the fold. That's a good percentage. Anyone knows raising sheep that you don't come through with 99%. If you have a little over 50% of those that are born... You're going to do well, friends, and to get that many to market. But this is an unusual shepherd. He's not satisfied. Ninety-nine, whom he called, whom he justified. If he justifies a hundred sheep, he's going to glorify a hundred sheep because when that little old sheep gets lost, he's going out after him because he's coming through with one hundred sheep. It'll be like this someday, and I make this rather personal, someday... He'll be counting them in. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be all of you folk. And 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 99, 99. Where in the world is Vernon McGee? (laughs) And then he said, well, looks like he didn't make it. Well, we'll let him go. Because a great many people didn't think he was going to make it anyway. We just let him go. My friend, thank God he won't let him go. Because that shepherd says, if he does get out, I'm going to go after him. And I'm going to have a hundred sheep. And that's all this means here. This is not a frightful doctrine. This is a wonderful doctrine. That means Vernon McGee is going to be there. And it means you're going to be there, my friend, if you've trusted him. He's a great shepherd, by the way. Don't tell me this is a terrifying doctrine. It's the most comfortable doctrine I know anything about in these uncertain days in which we live. He goes on here to say something else. Verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? And my answer to that is this, what can you say? I have many thing to add to this. This is too wonderful. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? If God's on your side, nobody can be against you, friend. Nobody will ever be able to bring a charge. Now he's specific with this. Notice what he says here, and he's given us the who's who here. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And how wonderful that is. He didn't spare his son. He spared Abraham's son, but not his. He gave his son to die for us. And he'll give us all things that we need. 
Somebody says, well, I may not be able to hold out. He's going to do that for you. He's going to hold you. The shepherd, you see, is the one who holds the sheep. And the sheep are safe, friends. It's not because they're smart sheep. Sheep are stupid. It's what a rancher told me in San Angelo, Texas. He raised sheep. He said, they're stupid. And they don't have sharp claws. They can't protect themselves. And they have no fangs. They're little old helpless animals. And if a little old sheep stands up and says, I'm safe, safe am I, is that sheep safe? Yes. Smart sheep? No. Stupid. Well, why is the sheep safe? If that little sheep is safe, it's because he's got a wonderful shepherd. And my shepherd says I'm safe, friends. I'm just repeating him when he says all of this. He spared not his own son, but delivered him up. How shall he not with him also give us freely all things? And Dwight L. Moody used this illustration. He said if he went into the finest jewelry store in New York City and they brought out the loveliest diamond that was there and the owner said, that's yours. And he'd say, you don't mean you're giving me this most valuable diamond? He said, yes, it's yours. He said, now, if he gave it to me, I wouldn't hesitate to ask him for a piece of brown wrapping paper to wrap it up in to take it with me. May I say to you, if God gave his son to die for you, didn't spare his son, don't you know he's going to give you everything that's necessary in this life and the life to come? You can't ask for anything better than this, my friend. Now, will you notice verse 33? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who's going to lay anything to the charge of God's elect? You can't bring any charge against them. And you know why? Well, the reason is this. Now, this is the beginning of the who's who. Who? Well, the reason is this. Who is he that condemneth? God has placed his throne back of his elect. They're justified sinners. God's back of them. But who's going to condemn? Nobody can condemn. You know why? It's Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. You see, you have four things he's done for he died for us, he's raised for us, delivered for our offenses, raised for our justification. But that's not all. He's even at the right hand of God. He's up there right now, friends. I don't care where you are, who you are, how you are. He sees you right now. He's the living Christ. You need him? Why don't you go to him? Why don't you appeal to him? He's the living Christ. And he also maketh intercession for us. Did you pray for yourself this morning? And you ought to. We ought to pray for ourselves. Well, if you missed it, he didn't. He prayed for it. He makes intercession. This morning, he said, Lord, there goes that fellow McGee again. And he'll stump his toe if we're not careful. And so watch over him. <laughs> he watches over. Wonderful, isn't it not? These are four things. And you know, this is the reason that you can't lay anything to the charge of God's elect. Because of what he's done for us. Four things Christ has done for us. Now, we are told, here's something else that's quite wonderful. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now, who's going to separate us from the love of Christ? And he mentions everything that you can think of here. He says, shall tribulation... That's trouble. Is it possible that trouble will separate us? No, my friend. Trouble is not going to separate us because he's not going to let it. And this stress here is anguish. Oh, you may think God has let you down, but my friend, he hasn't. And this stress will not separate you from him. Persecution, it means actually legal persecution. It means that there are those today that are carrying on a campaign against you. And that's not going to separate you from the love of Christ. And famine and nakedness and peril and sowing. That's a brief biography of Paul's life, by the way. None of these things can separate you from him. 